Sky Pirates. The unquiet trader seems to be scanning the skies in silent desperation. Uh, you have the look of a lad who's seen his fair share of trouble. If you're willing to help me with mine. A capable sort to head into the Sea of Clouds and track down a missing airship. I had to mortgage my soul to get that vessel built, so weighing the contract ferry supplies at the cloud top was a real weight off my mind. But it seems my luck ended there. My ship was due back in Ishgard bells ago. I've been praying for a glimpse of her sails ever since. Can't help feeling the worst. What if she's run afoul of Sky Pirates? My creditors will have their pawns of flesh. Make me foolish to fear piracy so far above the waves. Well, let me tell you that no honest merchant's safe now that airship production has, you'll excuse the pun, taken off. Any scoundrel with a sack of coin and a vague sense of direction can terrorize the skies. Oh yes, this new breed of buccaneers like to paint themselves as dashing explorers raving the unknown, but the truth of their nature is right there in the name. Sky Pirates. Given half a chance, they'll strip your ship of every last scrap of cargo and cry yahar as they launch you screaming over the rails. I've heard the story. Please, you must make haste to Camp Cloudtop. That's where the shipment was bound. Inquires the fate of my poor ship. Oh, my poor helmsman. As from Tremont. You'll know if any man does. Okay. Hey, Amphi. <laughs> Leave Perman DPSQ. Yeah, true. We shall leave firm in DPSQ. Supply airship has gone missing, you say? Well, that would certainly explain why our provisions are so late in arriving. I did, in fact, spy a vessel charting an erratic course northwards a short while ago, but it seemed disinclined to make port here. I paid it little mind. Not the most compelling piece of evidence, I grant you, but I have witnessed naught else of interest. Just if you investigate the landmass to the north. Rest assured I'll send word if I spy any other sign of our errant supply ship. Okay. Fuck this pirate up. Aid, aid, I say. These villains mean to plunder my cargo. What we got here then? Think you're some sort of hero, do you? Man, fucking bad luck for this guy running into the Warrior of Light. Mr. Chad gets copium. Hey, noob. Well then, you won't mind if your mates here join the fun. Make for a more heroic tale, won't it? Tale of how three sky pirates fed a meddling little shy his own bloody eyes. Go away, Biggs and Wedge. I recognize your little ship. I don't need your fucking help. What the? Oh gods, I know that ship. It's... Or no, it's, it's gonna be the, like, the OC for this fucking raid. It's gonna be the original character. So here are the scrags that have been dragging our good name through the mud. You, you're Red Bill Leofard. We ain't done not to you or yours, but you want with us. Mm. Awesome, thank you so much for the 100 bits, man. Your neck beard and we love you. I 
think I made me position pretty clear. Take on the mantle of Sky Pirate, you agree to a certain code of conduct. Codes ain't worth, worth much, folk go around breaking them. Frankly, lads, you're making us look bad, and we can't have that. No hard feelings, though, eh? This guy can move in cutscenes, he's very powerful. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Leofard. Thank you. I'm certain my master will wish to repay you. Your employer does business in Ishgard. He likely knows a merchant or two what trades with me associates. I don't say it's for Leofard, and any reward should reach me soon enough. As for you, adventure, paying off and someone beats me to the scene. And I expect not less from a hero such as yourself, Chadkiss. That is who you are, ain't it? I don't know too many other folk with one of them marvelous mana cutters that aren't more streamed up. Well then, seems you saved me the trouble of tracking you down. I've been hoping to have a word with you, you see. I'll put it to you straight. I need someone to help out with a little venture I have in mind. I'm used to taking a few risks. Now, this wouldn't be no black hearted brigands' work, so don't go worrying yourself on that account. Unlike them thieving curs just now, I don't hold with Robin honest folk. For me, you see, the Sky Pirate's life is all about freedom. Freedom to go where you will. But what lies beyond the next cloud? If you're interested in joining us on an adventure worthy of the name, then look for me standard in the northern reaches of the Blue Window. Someone will be waiting. There to greet you. Okay, Red Bill's standard. Oh, it's actually in this zone, okay. I'm not gonna bother TP and just gonna fly. Fuck it. That's far enough, stranger. Value your life, tell me true. Do you stumble across this marker by chance, or are you here by invitation? Yeah, I'm here by invitation. That would make you the hero the captain said to watch out for. Well met. Name's Stacia. Leeford would call me his right-hand woman, but I feel more like his buddy nursemaid, God's, be God's truth be told. Ahem, anyway, my thanks to you for coming to hear him out. Follow me, I'll take you to the Red Bill's nest. That black mage AFK there? I don't know. I don't pay attention to other players. Not sure exactly how that even counts as landing, but hey, whatever. Like, they're literally just. Makes no sense, but. <laughs> the airship landings of this game literally don't make any fucking sense at all. I 
come to you in person, and still you refuse my offer. Arrogant fool. On the subject of ar arrogance, Radlia, I bow to your superior knowledge. That's all the bowing you'll get from me. As I've told you a dozen times before, ain't no one's lackey. What's up, Hudik? But my dear Leofard, how else do you propose to survive an expedition to the ghost ship? I'd fear for my life if not, but your feeble crewmates at my back. I'd fear for me life with your manger crew at my back. I count them being murderous, untrustworthy bastards to a man. Oh, she didn't like that. <laughs> Thought you clever than this, Red Bill. No matter. I always get what I want in the end. It's merely a question of method. Found Emphy's waifu right here. Pirate lady. <laughs> now there's a face I've not seen before. Hmm, you don't have the look of one of Leofard's little birds. He's a guest. You understand the concept, don't you? You know when someone is invited instead of just bursting through the door whenever she damn well pleases? There's the first quest for this. Uh, it's in Foundation. In the Pillars. It's, um... I think the quest is called Sky Pirates. Yeah, Sky Pirates. Mm. Actual FF14 waifus. <laughs> oh yeah, Emphy, you haven't seen Ida. Ida's uh, different now. I think Ida might be waifu material for you now. <laughs> that was Radley, a captain of the town. She knows Leofard's the best sky pirate alive, and the fact he won't join her sticks in her craw. Can't let them talk to you like that, Captain. We should teach them Red Bills some respect. Patience. When all this is over, we shall see who rules the skies. Did she just do the, like, Pixar evil villain smirk? Oh there, hero. I promise you high adventure, and high adventure you shall have. We plan to board the Sea of Clouds' very own ghost ship. Or what folk have taken to call one anyway. Every day for the past few weeks has brought with it a new sighting of the self-same vessel, a massive airship of queer design adrift on the wind. Being a curious lot, there were a few buccaneers who tried exploring below decks, but not one of them has been seen since. So naturally, they're saying the ship is cursed. Well, haunted. Like I said, honest to God's ghost ship. My guess is she's another relic left behind by the Alligans. But we won't know for sure till we've had ourselves a good poke around inside, and liberate whatever ancient treasures she's got moldering away in her hold, of course. Before we start dividing up the spoils, we've got to find the damn thing, which is why I've been working on a special new device. Ah, uh, finder will be the easy part. What we can't do without is a veteran explorer what ain't afraid to fling himself face first in the jaws of danger. Now I know you're a gallant champion of the people and all, but strip away the fame and the glory, and I'll wager you're still an adventurer at heart. So what say you, Chad? Just fancy a plunge into the unknown at the side of the Red Bills? Fuck yeah, why not? Besides, it's probably the ship itself is probably a fucking primal or something. Probably gonna blow up the world if we leave it alone. It's settled. Pay a visit to our crew, mate, Utada. She's been working on a way to track the vessel. The fuck? Level 77 wearing 64 gear? 
Greens. Name's Utada. I suppose you'd call him the Red Bill's Chief of Engineering. Smithing, Carpentry, Magitech. If it's part of an airship, I can fix it. I just don't, just don't expect to see me waving a cutlass and swinging over the rails. There's fighting to be done. Well, that's what we have you for. Yeah, somewhere I see, I see Moz. Oh yeah, I know that you're there too, uh, firm. I can see you guys. I see the thing. Cool skies. You tell us seems eager to share our findings on the ghost ship. Well met, ladies and gentle pirates. Now that we appear to have our hero, I'm happy to report that we've overcome the last obstacle to boarding the ghost ship. Your project is proceeding as planned. That is, Captain. I knew this would be the perfect place to take readings. And mounts of background ether make it easy to follow the derelict's trail. The ghost ship has what Utah tells us is a unique etheric signature. Building a device that can sniff out this particular spectral flavor and point us in the right direction. I call it the Ecto Compass. Allow me to collect some solid data on the vessel's movements and plot a reliable intercept course. No groping blindly through the clouds for us. All the ships are loaded and ready to fly. Just say the word, Captain. Got it. You best stay here out of harm's way. Keep an eye on them ether trails, eh? Alright, Captain. Grab an armload of treasure for me. Now, we've got no way of knowing what's waiting for us on that cursed hulk, Chad, because you best bring along a few mates, what you know you can trust. Don't hurt to be too careful, seeing as how you'll be going in first and all. I did tell you you'd be going in first, didn't I? Well, you will. The rest of us will be guarding the rear, just in case Radley and her brood decide to stick their beaks in where they ain't wanted. Don't worry, she'll not get past us, so you can concentrate on carving a path into the ship's belly. Honest to God's ghost ship. Oh, this is gonna be an adventure and a half. I'm gonna gear shame some random dude. Okay, so do both do both of you guys wanna come or just Moz? I wasn't sure if Firm wanted to come. Also, I totally gotta show Amphia Ida real quick. <laughs> Where the fuck is Ida at here? Probably my next quest. Oh. You want the free queue? Oh, I see. Your shame, firm. Oh, I will. Firm, I'm a tank, so you better do at least twice my DPS on every fight. You're getting gear shamed. Yeah, Emphy. Th this is Ida now. <laughs> what do you think? She waifu material for you? You better not be AFK. <laughs> never done these before? I've never done these before either! Friendless, boss, firm. Hope you watch the guides. Fuck no, I haven't watched any guides. You think I watch guides for shit like alliance raids? Hell no. Okay, where is it? The void arc. Age when the miracle of the airship has become commonplace. The heavens have seen the rise of a new breed of fortune hunter, the Sky Pirate. These airborne buccaneers sail the endless sea of clouds in search of hidden lands to explore and forgotten treasures. To explore the hidden land in search of hidden lands to explore and forgotten treasures to plunder. Why wow, I can't read. At the behest of one such band of sky pirates, you have joined an expedition set on boarding the ominous ghost ship of recent rumors. Will you turn triumphant with Leofard and his red build arms laden with the spoils of some ancient trove? We follow the perils of the haunted vessel as is every would-be looter before you. 
Went into extreme Shiva blind. Very fun, easier than expected, minus the dumb noobs. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't go into extreme mode trials blind, personally. I, I consider extreme modes to be real rating, and like, everything below extreme mode to be LFR tier. It's six-year-old content. Yeah, but you I level sync in this game. Like you level and I level sync, so that argument doesn't really matter. It would matter if you were going in unsynced. Like if you were level 80, you know, with 100,000 HP, um, then it would matter that it's six-year-old content. But you know, that doesn't really matter in FF14. Two healers, 60 DPS. It seems like it's going relatively fast. It says average wait time 10 minutes, so I'm sure it's not going to actually take 10 minutes. But yeah, Emphy. We learned that Ida isn't actually Ida. Uh, her name is Lise. Uh, Ida was her sister that died six years ago. And that's why she's been wearing the mask the whole time. This is because that was her sister's mask. And, um... I guess she thought that people would, like... Would be like, you're not Ida, get the fuck out! If, um... If they knew that she wasn't really Ida, which is why she was wearing the mask. I'm just gonna keep calling her Ida, because I don't care. <laughs> I was like, huh, did you say something extra? <laughs> oh, you ditched the mask, extra. Good. You look better without it. Is that too cruel, chat? Shadow of Mahak, the Void Arc. I guess these don't matter for, uh... I saw three mobs, so I grabbed one. I probably should have grabbed one on the far right. I was gonna try and separate them, because I remember the fucking first pull of, um... One of the previous Alliance raids. It was, like, really fucking rough. Like, it was one of the parts of the Crystal Tower, I forget which one, I think it was the third part. Uh, the, like, first pull of it was these fucking griffins. 
And if you kept them together, they did bad shit. What are you fighting? Uh, like, concerning the, like, the last boss at this place, I have no idea. We're plundering a giant ancient ghost ship called the Void Ark. Okay, take those the fuck out. Yes, that. I level 200 gear. Huh. So I should totally. Where's the blur name? Yeah, I should totally do that. Just wandering around. Uh, the tanks are all gung ho about this, zooming in, grabbing stuff. That was easier than the Crystal Tower fights. I mean, the first part of Crystal Tower was ridiculously easy, so that's well, not crazily surprising. That is a huge AoE on that. Like, absolutely ridiculous.
fuck this bullshit. Guess this. Actually, I have no idea what we're supposed to DPS, so... Looks like they're going down at the same rate, they might share health pool. Oh. I am Giga Sun. Not Giga Sun anymore. Yeah, that's invulnerable now. Shockwave Stomp, that seems really bad. What do we do? What do we do? We hide behind this. We LOS. Um, I'm gonna pop a defensive and my knockback immune. Hey, I'm fine. Instead, I guess this thing is the real boss. It was a boss fight. Did you see how long it was taking? Crash mobs die in like 10 seconds, and that was a two minute fight. Of course, it was a boss. Meddling mortals, arise and taste vengeance, my ravenous kindred. Oh! It's fucking Ebola. Target the damn thing. I don't know why I lost target there, that was weird as fuck. Really trash room took longer than that? Yeah, but we were fighting the same thing though. Like, the boss was the pillar in the center, and we were bonking it for two minutes straight before it died. Like, that early trash pull might have taken longer than that, but there was no one mob that took any more than ten seconds to kill.
kill these. as fuck. Like, not actually doing damage. Not paying attention to fucking the fact that he's damage immune. I know why I wasn't expecting an immune phase. This is fine. Oh, he's dead. It was fine. Grab the one on the right. I'm in the line C. Makes sense. Or they did the fusion dance. Never mind. I have no idea what's happening. We're plundering the ghost ship. Duh. I'm gonna get locked out, aren't I? Yeah, made it. I really hate that it lets people skip that cutscene and then, like, fucking pull the boss like that. I think there was somebody that had a move out thing there that didn't move out. Okay, whatever, I'll fucking hit this one then. I guess it actually doesn't matter, it looks like they hard fixate. I win. Easy. To be expected, the first part's gonna be really easy, though. Way out gear the first part. I actually can see the last part being kind of hard, based on how slow those bosses were dying. If that's gonna represent, like, our average DPS throughout this, then it might be really, really fucking rough on the last part.
the leaf. Bugger me. I expected danger, but not hell spawn bleeding nightmare made flesh like that. Didn't stop you and your mates, though, did it? That's some crew you've got there. No mistake. That looked like melted cheese. <laughs> right then, let's have a look inside that dirty great coffer type thing. Some tells me it's filled to the brim with booty. Don't look at me, I never moved a muscle. Final Fantasy VIII boss! What in the seven hells is that bastard doing? It's a primal! This way, swiftly now. The fuck's that thing? That eight Sith? Er, can anyone else see that talking cat over there? Bloody hells! This adventure is getting queer by the minute. <laughs> yeah, you might want to get out of there before he finishes charging whatever that is. So I'd rather take my chances with the Pratlin Puss and stay here. Get your things, mateys. We're leaving. But what about the loot? Can't spend it when you're dead. We either follow the furball or make friends with the spell slinging Voidborn. Your choice. God damn it. How's not a sky pirate meant to make a living? Please just disintegrate her for standing there like that, talking. That would be fucking amazing. It would have been hilarious if, like, the rest of them got out of there, but, like, her and the fucking big guy just got turned to dust. <laughs> that would have been so awesome. That was cool, though. I dig it. Fuck is this cat, by the way? I'm pretty sure it's meant to be Kate Sith from Final Fantasy VII. Or something very similar. Wyatt has a ridiculously long fucking tail, though. And an incredibly, like, sh like small upper body? I don't know. It's all neck. It's like the Templar. Long neck boy. Ship's breaking up. It's trying to bring her down? Yeah, the Void Arc is probably a prison. It's like, are you on Jay? <laughs> True. Giga? Monka Giga? Any raids sent us? Not getting food? Uh, just one. We just did the Void Arc. Void sent us to initiate dimensional displacement. But the gate can't possibly be large enough for the entire ship. Monka. Ripping a hole through fucking dimensions. Those Monkas. Terrifying.
Yes, the queen's coffin takes it beyond our reach. This cat's feet, they're just lines of toes. <laughs> Fucking cat, man. Well, we don't seem much point hanging around here. Let's get back to solid ground. A lot of cutscene coming. I don't care. It's not a problem. I ex I expect that this will take like I, I. The only way I'll be surprised by the amount of cutscenes is if doing these three parts takes more than half the stream. If it's more than five hours then I'll be surprised by the amount of cutscenes. Hi. It was a bit touch and go in places, I grant you, but here we all are, and all with our bits still attached. This calls for a foaming flagon of... Hold on, ain't we missing someone? Tell you Todd to wait here for us. Air fear, we've been keeping the girl company. There's just four of them. We can just kill them. But enough about her. Did you see the cannon on that ship? As you know, my dear Leofard, I'm not easily moved, but the sheer power on display set me all a quiver. Didn't need to know that. We hope you're content to admire it from afar. That vessel ain't for the likes of you and me. You don't presume to measure me by your own limitations. Besides, I believe I've shown how resourceful I can be. Brings me neatly to the point. You have in your possession a device capable of tracking the ghost ship. Hand it over, or your engineer shall suffer the consequences. Sure, just just give her the device, get the engineer back, and then kill them. This is rather simple. We completely outgun them on every conceivable level. Marcus, the solution to everything? Well, we could just kill them. Well, when every problem is some fucking red shirts with weapons start threatening you, then the solution seems pretty simple, doesn't it? <laughs> Perfect. Compass pointing the way to my just reward. A weapon like that belongs in the hands of one with the will to use it. Come, lads. Our business here is concluded. Yeah, now just kill them. They're walking away. Like, right now you could still catch them. Warrior of Light, do something. Charge. Engage. Attack. Go. Command. Move. Fight. Kill. <laughs> or don't do anything, as you always do in cutscenes. I'm sorry, Captain. They caught me off guard. It's okay. You're probably just cutscene deficient like the Warrior of Light. Yeah, bang on the head or something. The man I know would never give in a scum like her without a fight. Unless... Uh, what did you do to the compass? Ooh, me? Not. Besides slipping a link pearl into its casing. Like. <laughs> as long as Radley keeps it close, you'd be damn sure she will. You know exactly where them thieving bastards are planted. Anyone care to wager how long it'll take her to notice me a little gift? It's very clever and all. But how are you proposing to stop her from getting her hands on that derelict and its great big cannon? It ain't, wor it ain't worked that part out yet. By spec, it'll start with us keeping a close eye on the talons. Before we get any of that, though, we've got some questions what need answering. Wish no more of the Void Ark? The ghost ship, as you call it? Yeah, and what the fuck you are. The Void Ark, so that's its proper name. Ah, I'd like to hear whatever you'd care to tell us, puss. Now I, for my part, am curious to hear your stories. Ere we continue, however, I must insist that you address me by my proper name, Hatesith. 
I will not respond to puss or cat, and most decidedly not furball. My tale begins long, long ago, in the city of Mahak, which once stood in the lands of Yafam. Sorcerers of Mahak were masters of destructive magics, and they brought that terrible power to bear against Amdafor and Nim in the War of the Magi. Titanic forces they unleashed, however, took a heavy toll upon the land, ultimately resulting in a colossal flood around the realm of Eorzea. Catastrophe, which my master, High Void Mage Cesare, was wise enough to foresee. This is the start of the big raids. Um, these are Heaven's Ward Alliance raids. Void Ark and such. Wait, wait, wait. Colossal Flood. Are you talking about the sixth Umbral Calamity? Hmm. I suppose you would know it as such. Now, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. When they learned of the fate that awaited them, Mahakai Magi began construction of, Argan of a gargantuan vessel it would bear their people of the skies, and to safety. The operation of the Void Ark, as the ship came to be called, was entrusted to Cesare. Prior to that, of course, my master had been a prisoner in her own home, fined for her outspoken opposition to the war. The Ark was meant as a sanctuary. How did it come to be so, um... I mean, what happened to all the people? And where all the Void Scent come from? By what power do you imagine such a massive craft remains aloft? The energy required to raise the Ark was siphoned from over a thousand otherworldly serpents sealed within the vessel. Advances in Mahaki sorcery were made for one reason and one reason only. Cataclysmic destructive power. And the swiftest and most dangerous method of acquiring that power was through the enslavement of void sent entities. So the creatures on the derelict, they broke free from your master's control. The very heart of the Ark, the Void Mages, had entombed a great ruler of the Void Scent. Skathok? Is it Skatha? Scat, the Shadow Queen. <laughs> when Hora controls so potent a prisoner, a page of adamant will was required, and being the Hawk's preeminent sorcerer, Cesare was deemed best qualified, where it otherwise my master might never have been released from her own imprisonment. Even with Cesare's peerless skill, the Shadow Queen could not long be subjugated. One after another, the lesser Void Sun awoke and ran rampant within the ship. In the end, Cesare and the 53 Void Mages aboard the Ark sacrificed their own life energies to turn the fiends to their coffins, leaving me, a lowly familiar, to watch over a derelict prison. I remember me Umbral Era's right. The stuff you just described happened more than 1500 years past. Which is a good while by anyone's measure, and since everything seems to have been quiet on board your boat till just recently, I'm thinking something unusual must have happened to wake the inmates up. Am I warm? One day, a void scent that had taken the shape of a bat flew into the ship. At first, it was a little more than a nuisance that I brushed away, but the longer it remained on the Ark, the stronger it seemed to become. Eventually, I could not contend with its power, and it began shattering seal after seal. So basically, you suck. You didn't kill the ad in time, and it berserked. Uh, but you looked upon the true form of this fiend as he broke the chains holding the queen's coffin. I can only assume that he's one of Skatha's subjects, bent on bringing about her return. Well, that explains that, then, except for one small detail. Namely, where the queen's coffin went. After it fell out of the ship's belly, I'm assuming it didn't just disappear, right? Call the great rift the Ark's cannon ripped in the sky. That was a void gate. Such a portal opens a temporary path through the void, allowing the ship to travel almost instantaneously from one location to another. The void sent, as you saw, only opened a gate large enough to displace the coffin. As for the coffin's destination, however, I did not mean to right-click there. <laughs> or not right-click, uh, left-click. I didn't mean to click there. It doesn't matter, though. 
I beseech you, Congress of the Ark, help me find the Queen's Coffin, ere the wards binding Scatha are dispelled. It smells to me like an adventure, and who knows what ancient Mahaki treasures we might stumble on along the way. Gods know, they'll make a nice change from all them elegant tombstones we've been collecting. Oh god. They're collecting tombstones, chat. I will help you. I'm not risking me high for the sake of the realm, you understand. But I'll be damned if I let either Radley or that bat-winged bastard take the freedom of the skies from me. You... you care only for how you might be inconvenienced? If Shadow Queen will return, it will have dire consequences for this entire star. Count your blessings, Furball. I said we'd help, didn't I? Before you go rushing off in search of that coffin, though, there's preparations to be made. Might as well get back to your usual heroic employment, Chadkus. I'll let you know when it's time to round up your mates again. Time is nigh, my dear Talons. Soon we shall seize control of the ghost ship and all its power, and rule the skies from here at the ends of the world. Yahar! Filler villains. Fucking filler villains. Hey, we did it. Weeping City. Stacy appears to be in need of your assistance. Chadkus, I was just about to fly out to Ishgard and track you down. Remember Kate Sith, that Mahaki familiar? We've been working with him on a plan to find Diabolos in the Queen's Coffin. There have been void scent sightings from pirates all over, so we know that bat-winged buggers hide someplace in the sky, we just don't know exactly where. As for going about pinpointing the location, they fired in the feline bickering over just, ha just exactly how. That's where you come in. If you spare a moment or two, we could use a third opinion to break the stalemate. Besides all that, Leofard's eager to have another hand to help in the search. So come on over to the parrot as soon as you're able. You know the way from here, don't you? Yeah, sure, I totally know the fucking way. Okay. Imagine if you could fall off the edge and die. Mount? Nope, can't mount here. Thanks for coming. The cat and the cat are inside, still having their discussion. Talk to Leofard, will you? Before I strangle the both of them. You hear ass with the queen's cough, and then you best turn around and walk straight out again. Daggerate and furballs turn my mood sour as mouth uh, as month old all goat milk. Monk a month old milk. Leofart, Chad has come all this way to help us at your request, I might add. He deserves to hear where we stand on the search at least.
time. Took to complete that last quest, I finished up to the next raid, went to the bathroom, made tea, and ate a brownie. Sounds about right. Search is giving me ulcers, is what it is. Bio reports, the Ebolos is lurking somewhere in the heavens, building up its forces. The sky is a vast dome, as high as the ocean is deep, and we not the pirates scour every damn floating rock. And yeah, this is this is Heaven's Ward content. So it's Alliance Raids from Heaven's Ward. Which I was gonna skip these, but then they started referencing the Crystal Tower, the Alliance Raids from uh, A Realm Reborn, um, towards the end of Heaven's Ward. So I was like, well, shit, I, I need to see the story stuff for this before continuing on with MSQ. So I tried my look with Radley. You remember her, don't you? Captain of the Talons, blonde hair, one eye, stole her bloody compass. I've been eavesdropping with that link pearl I slipped into the case and hoping to catch something useful. But all I've heard from her and her sorry crew. The story goblin and Jay Smith the Archbishop's holy leathers. Monka. And it seems we've no choice but to do this the hard way. A certain meal and annoyance refuses to acknowledge the truth of it. Oh, I don't remember any of these characters in Stormblood. Yeah, but people told me that there were no. They like the Crystal Tower doesn't get referenced later, and also that um, the order of the patches doesn't matter for the content when it totally does. So, I I only trust what I've seen, what I can confirm myself now. No trust. I've been traumatized. Can't possibly hope to investigate the entire sky with this meager handful of ne'er do wells. I'm my suggestion to seek aid from your fellow pirate gangs. Or a perfectly reasonable one under the circumstances. Ah, stow it, you mangy alley cat. Not the faintest idea of how sky pirates operate. Base case scenario, we'd be locked into a deal to hand over any treasure we find. That's assuming we weren't laughed out of the room to begin with. Can't assume that every man and woman shares your base morality. We have made the attempt, I'm sure we convince some few of the nobility of our cause. So it goes, round and round. No one pirates as I do, I find myself side with the captain on this. What about you, Chad? Guess any thoughts on the matter? I mean, if I was actually here, I'd say we should seek aid from other crews. Because... But I would take a different diplomatic approach here. Not only would I say we should seek aid from other crews, I would, I would ask aid from Ishgard. Because this is very clearly a primal. And primal always means death of all life. By definition, primal is an existential threat to all of existence. Because they suck up ether. Ether is life in Final Fantasy XIV. And their ability to suck up ether gets stronger the more they suck up. So they just give the universe the big suck and then everything dies. Um, you can't very well, you know, fly the skies and do your thing when, uh, when you're dead. Um... So, like, if this is D&D, that would be the attack I would take in negotiating here. But instead, I'm just going to say we should handle this ourselves, because I know that's not how the negotiations would go if these characters were to talk about it. See there? Even Chad disagrees with me. We proceed as we have been, try to cover as much sky as possible. How do we tackle things, though? The long road ahead of us. I'll see if I can't think of a better way to shorten it. Might as well head back to your adventures, Chagus. Wish you willing to lend, your ex us, lend us your experience on another matter, that is. Got our chief engineer has been mumbling about the Void Arc and cursed under her breath for days. Might be as you could provide some insight into her dilemma. She's conducting her research in the Sea of Clouds, yes? Well, I should rather discuss the properties of the Void Arc than continue with this fruitless debate. I shall see you down there, Chadkus. Can I kill it? Can I just, like, fucking kick it? Right here, right? Can I just teleport? I'd much rather just teleport. <sighs> teleport always fucking faster.
Bye, Midgard's armor. Bye, fat dragon. Go. Engage. Light speed. Super fast dragon move. Bro, oh, there's dungeons I haven't even done from fucking Heaven's Ward. Taking the airship down is way closer, FYI. Eh, it wouldn't be that closer, it'd be like right there. Takes you to the Peric. Almost equidistant. Not like it matters. I know those dungeons I've done for Realm Reborn as well. I remember. Come on, cat. Kick the wall, fell off the edge. What troubles you, Mr. Sutada? We are told that some matter concerning the Void Arc was causing you no small measure of grief. I think she's raping the cat. Yep. Mr. Shitata, what are you? Oh, Erk. Chad just is like, what the fuck did I just see? Ah, I feel so much better now. <laughs> Bestiality with the wall fells now, yup. <laughs> my apologies, Kate. Since so you had the misfortune to enter my field of view just as I felt the intense desire to squeeze something warm and fuzzy. This Dandel Ecto Compass. Made another one, you see. Identical in all respects to the first compass that Radley has stole. But look, points a completely different direction of where the Void Arc should currently be. I understand why I did wrong. I use the same plans, same parts. I can imagine that would be infuriating, and you're certain there are no flaws in the design or the materials? Positive. I've tweaked and adjusted and replaced every single piece. It refuses to function as intended. I'm on the verge of tossing the blast thing over the edge. What do you make of this, Chadkiss? It's probably pointing in the right direction. You're just retarded. <laughs> I wouldn't say either of these three things. I'd say what I just said, but this is the closest to that. Oh yeah, I don't think the compass is broken. Both these are acceptable answers. Yes, I'm inclined to agree. Judging by your previous work, it would seem unlikely that the compass itself is defective. You must consider other factors. Now you explain to us the principle of which the Ecto Compass tracks the Void Arc. It all comes down to etheric signature. I discovered that the Void Arc is encompassed by an energy of rather peculiar composition, so I simply tune the compass to follow its unique trail. Energy of peculiar composition, you say? Of course, the arc was propelled by the siphon energies of the void scent. It be the compass is tracking not the vessel itself, but the ether of the entities imprisoned within. Yes, it's possible. That would certainly explain why the compass now points in a different direction than one would expect. After all, the Abolos and the Shadow Queen are no longer on board the arc. Implying that if we plot a course based on the readings from the Ecto Compass, we would arrive on the demon's doorstep, so to speak. Just so, Mr. Zutata, saying my theory is correct, we no longer require outside assistance to pursue our elusive quarry. Oh, Stacio, what perfect timing. You don't believe the wonderful discovery we've just...
Alan Eric's just been spotted on route to our nest. It's revenge they're looking for. Best head back and make ready for them. I wouldn't mind killing the shit out of them. Uh, Vlad Greens, my dude. Truce, Red Bill. We need your help to save Captain Radlia. <laughs> Why the fuck should we help you? Fuck him. You. You're one of Radlia's favorites. You threatened my crew, see our compass, and now you come crawling to me for help. What kind of unholy mess have you cretins stumbled into? Alright, we took your damn compass, but it didn't show us to the ghost ship. We ended up at some moldy old ruins, lousy with void scent. Before we knew it, some sort of spider demon was knocking our ships out of the sky. Two of us managed to pull away, but we saw what happened to them as it got caught on the ground. The captain survived the massacre. She's stuck there with no wings to fly out again. Why don't you give that Link Pearl a listen, Captain? Might be as we can learn if Radley is alive or dead, at least. Want that mask and goggles? <laughs> nope, not happening. Ugh, so much buzzing. Can't hear a blasted. Wait, getting some words. They're after Mahaki artifact. Damn, demons are searching. Hide. Not much screaming. Seems Radley is still kicking for now, but who knows for how long. Those screams are an act, then consider me fooled. I don't think the Talons are laying a trap here. I actually have no idea whether or not you can get these. I would assume you can. It'd be weird if you couldn't. I have half a mind to leave Radlia to her fate, but I never turn my back on an adventure, especially when the Senate treasure's in the air. Now, tell me. Where you found these now tell me where you found these ruins. Oh, that guy to do with the mask. Oh. I would assume you could also get a pair of those. It'd be really weird if they gave NPCs unique stuff like that. You'll help us then? You're a good man, Red Bill. We left the captain in the Fame Salt Moor just northwest of Mordona. In your fame, you say? You know, speak of the ruined shell of Mahawk itself. By Shatoto's Black Heart, could they be after the Nullstone? Oh no, not the Nullstone. That sounds like a MacGuffin. What's that, Puss? Can you know what those fiends are after? Right. Utada, see if these talons are patched up, then have the ray meal ready to fly. Don't spare the oil. You know, I love to hear a purr. Chadkus, Stacia, bring the furball to my quarters, and we'll have ourselves a chat about our impending trip to Old Mahawk. Maxim, good evening. Right, Furball. Let's hear about this artifact that Diabolos is looking for. But I'm speaking of the Null Stone, that was first explained the method by which Mahaki sorcerers would bind the Void Send into service. 
The more powerful is Void Scent, the more difficult it is to manifest its presence in this world. Their own immense strength weighs them down like an anchor, you see, drains from breaking the surface of our dimension. That's why they cooperate with mortal sorcerers. A mage can provide a suitable vessel for the summoning, or rip a large enough hole in the fabric of reality for the entity itself to step through. Let me guess. The mage forces the void sent agreed. The, the the mage forces the void sent to agree to a pact in return for the invitation to our world. That is correct. But it would be foolhardy to expect such devious and malevolent creatures to abide by the spirit of even the most carefully worded contract. Thus did the Mahaki Magi construct an occult device that would more securely bind the void sent to their will. A safeguard of sorts. That, to the best of my knowledge, yet lies entombed within the remnants of the ancient city. The Null Stone was seen as a last resort. Should a Void Scent break its pact and turn on its summoner, the mage could use the relic to disperse the very essence of even the most potent entity, obliterating it completely. Can't see the royals, the Void, taken too kindly to a threat like that. It seems those sorcerers are just as ruthless as the monsters they summoned. Gain the glory of Mahak, the ends justified the means. In any event, we can be certain that Diabolo seeks to secure the Null Stone before it falls into mortal hands, and thereby ensure that Skitha will reign unopposed. Alright, so we know what the fiends are after. But what I don't understand is why such a valuable relic was left behind when the mages knew a colossal flood was on the way. Its value is the very reason they chose not to risk its relocation. No stone is kept within a structure constructed for the purpose, for the purpose, secured behind powerful wards and protected by deadly guardians. And with the rising of the waters, they reason that the artifact will be sunk along with the city, far beyond the reach of vengeful void scent. Now that Yafam is more swamped than sea, demons only have the wards and the guardians to deal with. I doubt they'd be wasting their time down there in the mud if they didn't have some trick to break through the wards. Alright, this has become a race so you can nab the treasure first, which is just the sort of contest the Sky Pirate lives for. So we slip into the ruins, pinch the relic, and rescue Radlia right from under the fiend's noses. Well, I suppose we could save her while we're poking around for loot. I'll grab the new compass from Utada so we know where we're going. Check your weapons, pack your small clothes, and meet me out by the landing when you're ready to fly. Vaccine, go! <laughs> Fly directly to Yafam from here. Once we arrive, you forge ahead with your band of adventurers as you did on that arc. Chad kiss. Just keep slicing the depths until you reach that null stone. Hmm, we don't want to risk getting knocked out of the sky like the Talon, so we best land a little ways out from the ruins and head in on foot. Furball says he knows the place well enough to guide you, so me and the Red Bills will fall behind on rescue duty. You concentrate on smashing a path through the artifact. We'll check the nooks and crannies for Radley and her crew. Don't let your guard down once you reach the ruins that way. Eh? Like the golems and such in there where worse than the fiends outside. Wouldn't want our hero losing his head now, would we? Yeah, I'm ready! Finally! 